Yes, I don't want too much to go into details. Nevertheless, I'm the technical director, so I like to spend uh, 15 minutes on the same slides with plenty of boxes and arrows and etc. as usual. I will try to stay uh, high level and to try to explain uh, uh, for uh, maybe non-technical people uh, what is about when we are talking about a, a secure component and the secure element and the value for EID uh, wallet. First of all, what we try to hide, it's all the uh, difficulties related to taking hardware, taking firmware, building a trusted OS on top of that, and uh, to make it standardize and to manage all the evolution of the hardware, of the firmware, of the security. Uh, and this is what we are doing within Global Platform from a root of trust. So with a secure way to load a primary uh, a credential, to be able to provide an environment that you can run your application. This, today we have two technologies, so the secure element with a tamper resistant, so high level of security. <clears throat> and we have also a trusted execution environment, which is a medium level of security, but running on the big chips, more memory, more uh, power calculation. Of course, we are not doing uh, everything on the T, or you cannot do everything on SC, depending on the use cases, uh, we, we think we have the right technology. So this secure environment, in fact, provides you, uh, and this is really the, the work that we are doing within Global Platform, is that you are uh, uh, sure that you are reaching a certain level of robustness. So robustness, it's a way to explain that you are able to protect your assets against <laughs> attacks. Okay, so when we say that the secure element is a tamper resistant, all the community knows that you are able to reach a certain level of protection of the credential. And this is something that has been tested, evaluated, verified. So each and every service provider which is storing credential within the secure element know exactly how much you are protecting against attacks. Uh, but we have also standardized API that are published uh, available, so you can develop your application and deploy this application across a lot of different products. This is very important to be able to test, to verify, and to ensure that after when the solution is working, you're able to deploy it. But there is something which is also part of the technology, it's standardized management command. In each and every secure component, you are able to deploy in exactly the same command your application, loading in the same way uh, your credential, modifying the credential, modifying the application, loading new applets, you, everything is fully standardized. And this is really two important parts because we are always talking about what is inside the device, what it will be inside the EID wallet, but of course you need to think about how to talk with your mobile phone, how to talk within the mobile phone to the secure element. So the two parts, how to deploy the application and how to connect, command, manage the application, this is standardized. And this is what we say that we have secure component and we have uh, certainly uh, a lot of billions of components currently available in the market. This is where we're talking. You are a secure environment, you know exactly what level of security is provided, you know exactly how to deploy an uh, application, and you, are, you know exactly how to manage the application. In today's world, it's not possible to think that you will load something and you will wait for 10 years, right? Like potentially passport uh, a few years ago, things are moving, we are in front of the big wave regarding uh, post crypto post-quantum crypto, we need to think about how to make this evolving in the future. And this is really the work of Global Platform. So look on the right of my slide. This is what we are offering you and what the Global Platform members are doing. It's to hide all the difficulties and all the technology that needs to be developed to reach this level of interoperability and security. And again, as said by uh, Stephanie, this technology is widely deployed. I don't think there is any other computing technology that has been deployed uh, as much as Global Platform Secure Element. Because today, as you see here, we are very low compared to the real reach of the product, but there is more than uh, uh, six, 67 billions of Secure Element that has been published, issued, and used by government banks, mobile network operators, and today's in most of the IoT devices. 
And we have the similar uh, success with the TE, even though the technology is more recent. Uh, there is a big trend today to have a, a TE uh, deployed. So in most of the smartphones, you have something like the TE. And uh, for your information, typically in Android for two or three uh, uh, releases, the TE is mandatory. So there is a secure area part and there is the secure element. So the, we have the two secure component in the device. And typically in your pocket, you will have certainly a banking card, a passport or, or an ID card that is using global platform. So this is really a, a big reach of our technology. And this, this is uh, because we have this standardization level and this uh, insurance of the security level. So I, I will just focus on the secure element. I have a very weird uh, drawing uh, on the left, just uh, for making boxes because it's, it's quite important. Uh, nevertheless, um, secure element, this is something that within Global Platform, we know exactly what it's about. It's a tamper resistance. So tamper resistance means that you are able to be protecting a bit high level of attacks. Our uh, secure component are multiple uh, actors. So as you see, there is different colors and there is no limitation in the technology about how many actors are here. Each and every actor may have different autonomy in terms of managing uh, the application. So you can have something which is uh, very uh, low uh, autonomy or something which is very high autonomy. So you can do everything you want on your area. And the area for a service provider, we call it security domain. So this is why you have the SD uh, on the drawing. This is uh, uh, very, very important because the technology is used in various markets and each every market have their own way to do business. Okay. And Global Platform does not take any decision about how you need to do business. We are providing the tools to offer some flexibility and depending of the market and the needs and the willingness of the actors to work together, we are providing the, the tools to make it happen. So think that uh, this is really like a, an hotel. Uh, you can go in the hotel book your room and when you are inside the room you can have different services for uh, free coffee or i don't know changing uh, everything in your uh, bathroom every two hours this is additional services you need to pay this is exactly what we are providing uh, within the secure element you create your own area and you are uh, decided which kind of services you want to access and to use in a standardized manner so the global platform technology, um, it's a technology that, that again, it's uh, freely available. So you can you go on the uh, public website, download the specification. And this is the base technology that is used by many markets. And typically when we are talking about embedded secure elements or ESE, uh, this is a direct usage of the global platform technology. Of course, this global platform technology, as I said, is already used also in banking cards, uh, an ID card. For your information, the first issuance of global platform cards was ID cards. Everybody think that uh, it was banking card, but some people may think that uh, the DOD was using the technology for a multi-application card back in uh, 2000. So this is the core technology. And, and now a lot of people are, uh, are talking about SIM and eSIM, and I just want to, to spend a few seconds because, in fact, we have done a, a strong collaboration with Etsy. And when Etsy back in 2000, six, five, or something like that. They were looking for a technology to manage multiple applications. In fact, a lot of the global platform technology has been embedded into the Etsy. And this is why inside each and every SIM today, you have the global platform technology APIs, a way to learn and when to manage. And this collaboration has been uh, continuing with uh, GSMA. GSMA has been publishing uh, in the recent year a lot of technology regarding eSIM, and this is also based on global platform technology. So if you go on the, the global platform website, uh, you will not find eSIM, but if you go in the GSMA website, you will, say that, uh, you will see that a lot of documents are pointing to global platform technology, because this is the core of the technology. And this is how we are working with a lot of industries. We are providing our tools in some kind of uh, pick what you like uh, inside the specification, but of course, maintain a certain level of uh, interoperability. So everything you are able to do in the embedded secure element, you are able to do it on the SIM and uh, also on the on the eSIM. 
There is a, a topic uh, that will be introduced after later on, which is SAM, uh, which is also a, a requirement which is uh, coming from GSMA. And again, uh, SAM is a specific environment within the eSIM uh, to facilitate some deployment. This is also based on, on, on global platform. So for your information, as an example, uh, um, the collaboration we have with GSMA, uh, all the eSIM products should have a stamp from global platform. So they are going to our uh, certification body and getting a certification, which is part of the process that GSMA has put in place to be able to enter inside the eSIM environment. So uh, within global platform, uh, we think that the certification is very important. In fact, everything is secure. So we need to help to sort and to say this is secure like this, this is secure like that, or this is secure like this, right? So it's not a question that uh, there is things that are not secure. Everything is a little secure, but it's better to know exactly which level of security uh, you provide. And also something which is very, 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 very important, it's which level of interoperability. Because here we are talking about mass market, we are talking about product that are in all the countries. And, uh, and this is also a good uh, result of uh, European uh, companies because all these standards are used uh, all over the world uh, through HC, uh, through global platform, and also through GSMA. So as you recognize my French accent, this is some kind of preparedness that, that I have. So we have been working uh, for more than 10 years now to integrate the secure element within uh, the, the smartphone. So, I will not say that each and every uh, secure element in the smartphone has exactly the same uh, connectivity because this depends on the model, the use case, and extra. But in most of the smartphone, in each and every smartphone, the secure element is connected with the OS, providing some uh, services. So it's really uh, at the core of the trustworthiness of the device. This is the lower part. Of course, we have uh, connectivity uh, with the application. So I put here also a, a link that uh, one of the global platform technology, uh, global platform uh, open mobile API is now integrated into Android as an open source uh, package. So in most of, in all the Android since uh, four generation, now you have a global platform technology which is really integrated into the OS Android. So this provides an access to each and every application to the secure element. So this is again, important to, to, to be able to provide this kind of, uh, first of all, interoperable but deployed uh, technology. Of course, uh, there is plenty of way to connect the secure element to what I put here, cloud, which is uh, application services, because each time you have your application you want to discuss, you want to update. So there is a lot of uh, technology about that. And there is also some specific, uh, more, I will say, uh, technical connectivity uh, most of the uh, NFC, high-level and value-added services uh, are using the secure element, so we have a strong connection with the, with the NFC uh, connectivity. We are now working uh, to connect also uh, the secure element uh, with the ultra-wideband, which is a connectivity that is uh, strongly uh, um, used in the automotive market. And we have a lot of uh, also biometric uh, interaction uh, to sort typically some templates uh, from the mobile phone into the secure element. So the, the, all these links, all this uh, effort of uh, compliance has been done in the past. And when you have today, you have something which is quite mature and allows to deploy a very, uh, I will say, complex or to be complex uh, uh, services with a secure element. So back to uh, how the secure element has been used for the mobile ID, I would like to show different way. Um, the presentation uh, that was quite uh, high level from ASA, which is good because sometimes uh, it's good to have high level with just few flow. Nevertheless, when you look how government or ID provider wanted to deploy, you may see different type of uh, uh, process. So the first was is to ask the secure element, which is a secure environment, uh, to generate specific credential to make the differences between uh, the credential that you store in the backend 
and uh, the credential that will be used. Of course, there is a link. This is why we, we call that uh, a derived credential. But you can ask to generate keys and the only keys that are known are known within the, the mobile phone, which is the case A. The case B, which is the, 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 the one that everybody thinking about, it's uh, I have my credential that has been already generated and then I push this to the secure element. Uh, there is also a case where you can use your passport, you can use your ID card, and thanks to the contactless connectivity, you are able uh, to have the secure element talking to the ID card, the passport, and to be able to generate derived credentials. Okay, so this is a, a way to show that uh, we have a view that it's very simple and sometimes the credentials are here, I put it and done. Uh, when you are looking at the different uh, deployment services, uh, you see that there is a uh, other way to, to do that. Nevertheless, all are working with the secure element or are, are being implemented in some country in the world. And uh, this can be the basis of uh, some deployment um, uh, within Europe. So after um, on this slide, uh, you have uh, the one which is managing the, the, the ID, the credential. Uh, and what I would like to show, it's also a different uh, way to uh, deploy the update or deploy the application into the, the devices. The, the first of all, we have different technology, again, on the, on the past year. Uh, we are able to manage what we call one-to-one. -one. It's typically you want to target a specific phone or a specific secure element for a specific pe some, uh, person, which is important. Typically, you want to load uh, uh, the uh, name or something like that. You want to target the uh, one and uh, only one um, device. Nevertheless, and if you want to have uh, an update, it's good also to support one-to-many. So typically, we are able to create a script of update and the same script applied to multiple devices. And we have all the technology to be able to select which kind of uh, devices you want to update. So typically, when uh, you want to switch from version V1 to version V2, it's good to have this uh, one to many uh, uh, scripts. If you want to update only one card, you need to have the one to one. So the global platform technology today supports the two. Uh, we have also synchronized and asynchronized. Typically, sometimes there is something urgent, so you want to reach and to deploy, and you want to get access, direct access to the secure element. And sometimes uh, you are uh, able to support the fact that there will be a new update. Uh, typically, the phone manufacturer are able to generate updates, and you put your script into the update, and this will be uh, deployed by the smartphone manufacturer or by you by night, because you want uh, every night or every end of the month or whatever. So we are able to create scripts that will be either sent directly or uh, to be generated and to be applied later on. And also, which is something very important, this is a direct or third party. Either you have the platform, you are able to go uh, and you make an investment to be able to have a direct uh, access to the secure element. Either you don't want to in, in, uh, have this platform and you give that to a third party. The third party can be uh, the smartphone manufacturer. The third party can be what we call a trusted service manager. And you will have a presentation about that. At the end of the day, you can create the same script in all these six different environments. And this is important because not each and every country will have the same environment, not each and every country will have the same structure in terms of uh, deployment uh, interface. And of course, uh, sometimes you need to be able to reach one uh, device or you want to access only um, uh, multiple devices. And this is again working in uh, SIM, in eSIM or in uh, embedded secure element thanks to the standardization of the technology, as soon you have your security domain, so the SD, then you will be able to discuss with your application. Okay? So there is some negotiation and some business uh, to discuss with the uh, uh, issuer of the secure element to create the security domain, but as soon as the security domain is created, you are totally autonomous. This is the value of the global platform technology since the beginning to say yes, you need to go inside the, the hotel and then you need to pay, but in your room, you do everything you want. 
Okay, this is very, very important. So uh, again, all this is regarding to uh, collaboration. So I discussed about uh, collaboration with GSMA, with Etsy, but we have long-term relationship with ISO also, either for common criteria, either for uh, the uh, technology of a smart card. Uh, we have a lot of discussion all around the world also. It's important and, um, and really this uh, EID wallet seminar, uh, even though it's focused on, on Europe, you will see a lot of people that are, are looking what we are doing in Europe with the EID. So this is very important for, for that. And, and again, uh, collaboration, it's also to be here today to discuss with you, uh, to have this discussion, to look uh, if we are providing all the tools uh, for the EUDI deployment or if we need to add something, this is very important for us to really uh, think about the future and to be able to sustain uh, this uh, very interesting deployment of uh, digital ID uh, within Europe. Voila, that was what I wanted to uh, to share with you today uh, to give you some uh, uh, I would say technical view of what doesn't mean uh, to have a standardized uh, secure element deployed in most of the smartphone today. Thanks for your attention.